and welcome to the Green and Gold Gridiron Show. I'm Margot Morin. And I'm Chris Sheets from Kissing Country's Morning Show. Can you say big game, Margot? Big, really awesome, important game. That's kind of what I asked you to say. You know what? Eskimos, BC Lions, Saturday night. If the Eskies win that game, I think you all know, finished first in the West since 2003 when Margot was like 11 years old or something. <laughs> You're young. That's all I know for sure. It's going to be a huge game. I'm so excited. And what's even more exciting is today's show. Mm -hmm. We're starting it all off getting to know an Eskimos alumni, Bob Howes, in today's fifth quarter. Bob Howes, number 53 at center. Mark Basically, what, what worked at the time is Edmonton was the last place team the you know year before, and so they got dibs on anybody that was cut, and they were... They were kind of cleaning house there in BC, and so we all got picked up. Things really started in the 72. I mean, we, we went to the Grey Cup in the 72 and lost, and then uh, 73 again and lost, and, and we were wondering whether we would get another shot at it then. And uh, then we you managed to uh, win in 75, and that, that kind, of, kind of solidified us. We got to where we were, we were playing well, but it was, it was kind of a paranoia about about losing almost. I mean, if if we got up uh, early and and suddenly you're you're up 14 nothing and you look up at the clock and you think, holy God, we got 55 minutes to go. I think anytime you have a, a championship squad and certainly five in a row, I mean, there's a whole lot of people that are going to stick around. And and when you when you do that, you have success. The only problem with that as a football player is that you play probably longer than regular players would. And so therefore it's sometimes very hard to get out of it. Well, I was already teaching school. I was out at Sal Salisbury Composite kind of stuff. And, and I wanted to get more into to, uh, coaching and this kind of stuff. And I had the operation or the op opportunity to go back to uh, Queens, where I played and, and uh, uh, helped, helped there. So in Bob Howe's 13-year career, he made it to eight Grey Cups and won five of them. That means that he has a 61.5% success rate in making it to the Grey Cup and a 62.5% success rate at the Grey Cup. So by the numbers, I'd say that's a pretty successful career. That's pretty amazing that you pulled that off without a calculator. High five. There you go. You know what? This has been so much fun all year. The draw play. Uh, Cavis Reed, the coach, he gets his turn to draw. What a lot of pressure for his uh, players, of course. you got to know what the coach is drawing. Well, let's see if that uh, turns out to be true. All right, we're here playing draw play with the Edmonton Eskimos, and you're watching the Gridiron Show. I'm Dave Jamison, and I'm here today with... Cavis Reed. He is the head coach of the Edmonton Eskimos and a guy who's skilled with a Sharpie. You're going to draw a picture. These guys are going to try and guess it. Go for it, coach. Okay. Here First card up is... Oh, Come on. Mountain, 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 mountain. Next card up. Well done. Just. Space and UFO. Space. Yep. We have a winner mix. No. Yep. Jim. Alien. There's some confusion. Yeah. Stickman alien. Let's go to the next one. It was a nail. <laughs> Fire. Lake. Water. River. River lake. Oh, see. Oh, see. Oh, see. Okay, he had it. Next one. Cut the tension with a knife here. Well done. Time, time is up. <laughs> Coach Reed, thanks for playing drop play. No problem. Good job, guys. You guys got to get my hammer with the nail. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. I have to say Coach Reed didn't get much help. I think there's going to be a few guys doing some push-ups or laps after that, don't you think? <laughs> Probably. Mm -hmm. So Chris, are you scared of heights? Yeah, I'm not really scared of them. I'm, I actually don't like climbing stairs to get anywhere. I'm too lazy, so uh, I don't know if that makes any well, sense. Well, I can tell you that two of our slot backs, Darius Bowman and Jason Barnes, they're not lazy. So they climbed no. all the way up to the top of the five-story obstacle course at Ropes Quest at West Edmonton Mall this week in Out of Bounds.
No, I've never really been afraid of heights, you know. I was always a thrill seeker as a kid, always trying to climb and go on the biggest roller coaster and uh, things like that, so definitely not. I mean, I used to do it as a kid, you know, cliff jumping, uh, that sort of thing in the river, but nothing like bungee jumping or skydiving definitely wasn't part of my, uh, my hobbies growing up, no. You gotta try the, the safe ones first. A little bit, it all depends on how, how high we're going. It all depends on the height. Maybe something like bungee jumping. What is that, skydiving? Anything that's, uh, when you start talking about stories and buildings and things like that, that's out of my league. I just don't feel like I'm doing it right. <laughs> I've always been scared ever since I was a kid. I've always been scared of heights, man. I don't even know how I came out this tall. <laughs> I could be like a little Chinese acrobat up here. Yeah, me and Darius are pretty good friends. You know, we live in the same building, we play in the same position. His locker's next to mine, so we get to talk and, you know, do all that sort of stuff. And uh, so it's fun working with him. You know, he's a competitor there, so I'm looking forward to it. Me and JB are pretty good friends, man. It, uh, met him this year, man. He's a cool guy, great dude, man. Uh, love working with him. Out on the field and off the field. It's kind of growing on me a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I can say we're developing that. I hope you fall. Yeah, we are definitely competitors, you know, whatever it is, you know video games, bowling, Yahtzee, dominoes, whatever it is, I'm smacking Darius every time we play, so I'm the champ, so we'll see. I, I would say uh, JB's very competitive, and uh, I've always been competitive, and so uh, it's, it's, it's great being out there with him, man. It's good to, have, to know that the guy next to you is out here trying to fight just as hard as you. I really, I, I don't think I can race across this thing. Uh, I don't think I can race across this Hey, don't do that, bro, bro. <laughs> It's hard to tell right now. Uh, once I get out there, I'll be able to tell. Uh, the lower levels don't look too bad, but uh, it's like three or four stories out there, so it might. It all depends. I got to see when I, once I get out there. I'm always, I'm always a competitive person, but uh, like I said, I got to get out there and see how I feel first, and then once we get out there, I'll be able to tell more about it. I think I'll do all right. You know, I always watch those TV shows when I have to go through the obstacles, and I always think, yeah, I'll be able to get out there, and you know, and. and and do my thing out there, but you know, uh, we'll see how it goes. I always want to try this, so I'm looking forward to it. See, nah, bro, I can't race across this, dog. You know, Darius is scared, you know, so I think I'm gonna have the advantage, you know, getting out there with no fear and uh, being able to get out there and get a faster time than he does. <laughs> Baby's a small guy, he might not do too well. And I don't know, he's out there like a big orangutan. He might, uh, he might be able to swing through those ropes a lot faster than I can, but we'll see. If it was some kind of mat or something up under us, dog, I think I could be a little bit more comfortable. Remember to tune in next week for the second part of Out of Bounds, where we'll see between Barnes and Bowman who has the faster time as they go up and down the ropes course at West Edmonton Mall. Speaking of time, a guy that's always on time and does a great job not only doing the play-by-play -play during the games with uh, Dave Campbell, but uh, gives us some interesting uh, inside information on the Eskimos. It's Morley Scott with Morley's Minute. Thanks very much, Chris. After a big win for the Eskimos in Toronto to uh, take over first place, thanks to a loss uh, in Hamilton by the BC Lions, the Eskimos going to Vancouver this week with a chance to clinch first place. Andrew Nowacki joins me now. You've been around this team for a lot of years. What's it like to get back into this position where you got a chance to uh, clinch first place again? Uh, it feels great. You know, the last time I think we were in this uh, position was 05 and uh, things didn't work out for us uh, that year. We ended up third, but it's, it's a great feeling to be in this position in control of your own destiny. I guess that's the key. Uh, you control your own destiny. Uh, talk about going into Vancouver, a team that's uh, up until the loss last week was the hottest team in the Canadian Football League. Uh, certainly, you got a chance to clinch first, but it's not going to be easy. Well, I think they still are the hottest team in the in the league. You know, one just one loss doesn't doesn't really say how good of a team they are or, or take away from what they're they're doing. Uh, they're still very dangerous on offense, and they got a veteran group on defense. So we just have to go in and and play well and execute. The Eskimo offense really got on track to, in the game in Toronto. First time in a few weeks, it, you know, Ricky was over 300. And he had a hundred yards in the ground from Massam, hundred in the air from uh, from Stamps. It seemed like one of those games where everything came together. Yeah, yeah, we we really put a a good game together, and uh, we played really well for for three and a half, three and three quarter quarters. But um, you know, we just we just have to uh, to keep doing just the the little things. The little things are really going to add up. Uh, execution on offense is going to go a long way for us. And this game Saturday is the kind of game that everybody looks forward to and uh, everyone's anxious to play, I'm sure. Oh, definitely, definitely, you know, especially with everything that's on the line and uh, not only not only that, but we did, we haven't played our best football against BC the last couple games and and uh, just because they are playing such good football right now, it, it 
it's a great way for us to to measure up and and uh, go into the playoffs on a high note. All right, Andrew Nowacki, thanks for this. Good luck in Vancouver. Thank you. All right, Chris, we'll send it back to you guys. Well, that does it for today's show, but we will be back next Wednesday with our final show of the season starting at 4.30 p.m. on Shaw TV Channel 10. You can also check us out online at esks.com and shawtv.com. Now, we want to hear your comments, good or bad. We want to know what you want to see on the Green and Gold Gridiron Show next season. Send your comments to thegridironshow at shaw.ca. Yeah, the comments about is his head really that big and should he not wear some powder on it probably are valid. But anyway, <laughs> huge game coming up on Saturday night. I can't wait. Just a few sleeps. Uh, Eskimos are taking on the BC Lions. It's the battle for first place. They win. They're in first place in the West Division. You can listen to the game live on the Voice of the Eskimo 630 Chatter. Check your Shaw HD listings. 8 o'clock kickoff Saturday night. But until next time, go, go Esco! Fantastic. <laughs> You're supposed to say that's exciting. Oh. It wants to see between that. Bon <laughs> <laughs> Those guys. The Gridiron Show at Shaw.com. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's .ca. Ah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Season. That's so true. Okay.